Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 5 of our FTV Skies Expert Mode Let's Play. Today, we're going to get our storage system up and running finally, so we can organize all of the loot we got in the last episode, plus all of the loot I spent a few hours afterwards gathering. So, let's just jump right into it. So, as you see, I built a small little hut. It's not, it's not great. I really don't like these corners. I added some bastion fruits I got from the loot chests like yesterday or last episode. So I added some bastion fruits to try to spruce up the outside, but I feel like it's too flat. Not a big fan of the outside. Nevertheless, in here, we just have a little little, little home, right? With some repositories. These are from Ars uh, Nouveau. They're basically a double chest. Well, slightly smaller than a double chest, right? Nope, they're exactly a double chest. My brain for a second couldn't think. So yeah, this is basically, uh, what, eight, 16 double chests along the walls. And then down here, we have a, a nine by a three by three by nine grade vault that is the max size vault you can make and create and that will also be a part of our storage system that we're going to get into in just a second here so we have plenty of storage and considering that i am going to have three more vaults eventually i just ran out of iron these are really expensive considering the fact that each vault requires two iron plates we've been using actual iron now to make them just because why sift gravel anymore but yeah so they require two iron per thing and that is what uh 81 so that's 162 iron ingots for this vault right here and yeah so i would need a bunch more iron to make three more vaults but one vault for now is plenty enough storage anyways so last episode you guys saw that i filled up about three and a half maybe four of these chests i may have continued on a little bit as you see i got some emeralds actually there's a lot of stuff in here that i had to go over i got these insane insane pickaxes or paxels from mechanism this was the one i'm using it's unbreaking four efficiency five growth four it's absolutely insane i combined the two elementium pickaxes we also got to make a fortune three unbreaking four pick there's no efficiency unfortunately on that one there's more stuff up here <laughs> <laughs> and then over here there's even more stuff i'll show you the map in a second more stuff here this is just growth and chainsaw chainsaw is actually pretty good uh zinc ingots these are from a quest we turned in actually so those don't count same with the fishing net down here we got diamonds finally i'm not like th this is insane 14 diamonds we have more emeralds we have some compressed iron uh logistic cores capacitors if you've ever played general mod packs with pneumatic craft in them you will usually find all of these stuff inside dungeon chests right so that's basically the loot table we ran through as you see we have a thames which i'll show you in just a second then we have uh, a mana steel ingot which we're going to use to make our ender inhibitor so we can get our mob farm running because we don't have enough to make a mana steel mesh yet and realistically an assembly drill is completely out of our zone right now and by the time we can actually make more mana steel we'll need it for this so we're going to use that mana steel ingot we got to make an ender inhibitor just so our farm's safe and we don't have endermen all over our base some other stuff and then this is mostly what i was crafting with yeah there's some vaults left over here some gold nuggets for the repositories i had to make and there's my old saw that i don't use anymore and then just a bunch more stuff that i was using to build so now you may be wondering where did you get all of this let me so this is our base right let me just zoom out a bit right okay I zoom out a bit more okay let me zoom out again oh 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 goodness oh that's a lot of void <laughs> oh <laughs> So, this is the village we found in last episode. I just went in a straight line like this, and I kind of went, like, I just I just started doing, like, a straight line, right? I came out of this corner of the base, did a straight line, found this village on accident. Then, I proceeded to think, okay, I want to see what else is out there. So, I started mapping. I went this way, and then I went up. And I continued on like this, marking out grid by grid the entire section... And then I found another village. I was like, oh, that's great. I probably won't find anything else near this village, right? I kept going and going to finish the little top quadrant of this map. And then I found the Cataclysm Sunken City just floating in the sky. And I marked this as Amethyst because there is budding Amethyst blocks in here. And I was like, oh, perfect. I can use those with Ars Nouveau with the Amethyst Golem to farm them. If I can grab them with mechanism cardboard boxes, which you can do. Then I realized I actually got one from one of the loot chests somewhere in here. Yeah, I have a budding Amethyst right here. So I don't actually need to go grab that. But that's where all this loot is from. So the Mana Steel, these schematics from Tetra, which I've never actually used Tetra 
Petra, so those are going to be interesting to get into. The raw gold blocks, the raw iron blocks, the diamonds, all of that was from the sunken city way over there. So I was able to kill some, some of the, what are they called? I don't remember. The cataclysm dudes, the angler fish and all that. I got a nautilus shell, which I will be using as soon as I can. Actually, I should make one right now. So it's two gold blocks, five, actually we don't have leather, do we? There is a goat coming for me in a second. Yeah, I don't have leather. Where's this goat gonna spawn? Come here. Oh, wait, what happened to the goat? Wait, what? I hear him. I don't see him. Mr. Goat. Oh, he decided to die all by himself. Poor goat. Anyways, like I was saying, we're gonna go ahead and make one of those. All right, before we were rudely interrupted, I forgot how fast this is. Before we were rudely interrupted by that goat, I was wondering if we had any leather, but I don't think we do. Now I can use this on a drying rack, correct? To make leather? Yeah, it takes 100 seconds. You know what? We're gonna do it. We only need the five, and we have the drying racks already set up. So we're going to set that to dry. We'll get some leather, and then we'll make ourselves our temporal pouch. If you don't know what a temporal pouch is, it's basically like the time in the bottle, which is a tick accelerating block that gathers time over, like it gathers ticks over a period of time. And then you can use those ticks to speed up machines and farms and whatnot. So it's really cool. And I think we you should get one like as early as possible so that it continues to gather ticks forever, right? like it's gathering ticks from the start to finish right and now i also want to automate this farm over here normally most people go with you know a tech a tech mod of sorts i am going to make whirlers breaks since we got diamonds i wasn't going to do this before i was like oh there's no way i'm going to be able to do this i won't even find whirlers breaks let alone i won't be able to get diamonds i won't have the mage blooms i won't have any of this lucky for me we got some wordless break shards from looting and we got diamonds from looting so we're gonna go ahead and make some wordless break charms later in the video but the first thing we want to do is we want to use everything here in our inventory to get our storage system finally because we've been waiting for a while to get this going and we should just get it done if i remember this correctly it's like this no i was wondering why i had so many things in my inventory oh it's only the one bottle of experience i need so we have an insightful crystal that is step one now we need to go over to our enchanting apparatus it doesn't require any source so that's nice and we'll go over to our enchanting apparatus and we'll make the second part which is the lectern this is basically like your hut it's your emmy storage terminal it's your refined storage terminal it's everything that sort oh, i love this animation there we go so yeah this will be our storage lectern and this will be i'll show you the gui in just a second here so if i go ahead and open up the storage lectern as you see there's a scroll wheel you can sort by different amounts and you have a crafting table built in dump your items out so on and so forth and there's a search so it's basically like your any your refined storage or your applied energy six terminal like i said so we're going to go ahead and place this just down in the middle right here so now that we have our storage lectern we have to go and make some bookworms now bookworms are made by sacrificing book and quills now it's not really sacrifice to a ritual brazier that is running the tablet of awakening now it might sound complicated but in the end it's actually really simple so we're gonna go ahead and make ourselves a ritual brazier right away which i had everything in my inventory to make it's pretty simple just an arcane pedestal some gold plates and a source gem block and we can go ahead and bring this over to our magic area and we'll just set up a small little ritual it might not be permanent we'll see stick that down down, and we need to place some source nearby but i need to go back to my crafting table i really should bring a crafting table over there because i obviously forgot what i have to do is i have to make myself a ritual of or tablet awakening so it's just one of each blazing or sorry one of each archwood sapling four gems and specifically a flourishing archwood log no other log works so now you go over to your tablet of awakening once you've right clicked it onto the ritual brazier you take a book and quill you right click it on then you right click and you get yourself a bookworm charm and now we just have to repeat that process three more times and we'll have four bookworms and now with your four bookworm charms you come back over to your left storage lectern and all you have to do is simply right click these bookworm charms directly on it and you will get a little guy now i'm gonna have four bookworms this is overkill i don't actually need four you only need three for this setup specifically but i just wanted the symmetry purposes because four repositories one vault per bookworm kind of just makes sense to me 
Now, I'm gonna go ahead and dye all of these guys red. Sorry, not red. I'm gonna dye them all purple, just because the blaze, the outside is purple, so may as well. Four of those. You can just right-click any color of dye onto them. Can they move, please? Come on, guys. You can figure it out. Okay, so they're not gonna figure it out. Anyways, so to connect any storage system, so you can connect chests or repositories, vaults, up to a 32 block radius away from the center storage lectern. Now, all of ours are pretty central, and the closer, the better, because these guys actually travel back and forth, kind of. It's weird how it works. It's not instant. Like, it won't be when you pull out stacks and stacks and stacks of items if you are it's not instantaneous because the bookworms technically have travel and give you your goods from the connected block so i always prefer putting them in a closer radius than the 32 allowed nevertheless for connecting a repository or a vault or anything to your system you just shift right click the repository and then you right click onto the storage book and it says inventory added and you just go like that and connect everything one by one and slowly but surely everything in your system will be connected so like i was saying each bookworm does eight connect like eight inventories each so we're going to go ahead and dye them all now we have a bunch of little purple guys and we can go ahead and connect this as well so we'll shift right click and add and now all of our inventories are added and it will be in the priority of which you added like items so if i go ahead and add these items to my storage system it will fill up this repository first that is why i added my vault last is because i want to fill up all of these repositories first so it will fill up by the first one you added right so we can go ahead and fill up our entire system with goodies so everything is now moved into our storage lectern here. I've also brought some cobblestone over just for recipes that we actually need it for. So yeah, you have your entire thing. You can sort by amount, you can sort by alphabetical, descending, descending, all the same thing. And you can do a uh, sync sort search or not. And then if you just click this down here, it'll open up to show you a large menu, but it will cover the crafting menu. There is no option like AE2 or refined storage to make your storage system larger so you can only see three rows of items at a time however you can search function as usual so if i wanted to see how many diamonds i have in storage i have 14 so that's how you would go ahead and end up doing that now the next thing we want to actually go ahead and do today is like i was saying earlier i want to automate my farm and how you go about doing that is with Whirless Briggs. Now these things are great. They will automatically harvest any crop block, netherrack, a lot of, there's a lot of different blocks they can harvest. As long as it's in their radius, the more the merrier. So you want to put as many blocks as possible so that they're happy. And due to their happiness, they will harvest faster. Now obviously having more than one is great and will improve your rates for all your farmed goods. However, I only have the one Wordless Briggs shard at the moment, and I don't have a shady villager in sight, unfortunately. So the next thing we actually want to go do is we want to make a market block from farming for blockheads. Oh, we need red wool and we need red dye. But look how easy this is. We have everything in, okay, we don't have everything in our storage system apparently, but we should have everything. There we go. We have a rose. That's fine. We can make a red wool and then we can go ahead and do this and make a market. So you see how I was saying earlier, the bookworms actually have to fly back and forth to bring items to your crafting table. That's why you can't remove stacks and stacks of goods and put stacks and stacks of... Actually, as I'm saying that, this is working pretty flawlessly. But you can't shift, you can't like um, shift space click to fill your inventory all at once as you can in like AE2 or refined storage. But they will fly back and forth with your items, as I was saying earlier. Nevertheless, we got ourselves a market block, so we're going to go ahead and place that down. Whoops. Oh, guys. I misclicked, my bad. So we're gonna go into the market over here. We're going to saplings. We're gonna get a spruce sapling, one emerald for you. And then we're gonna go in to get a birch sapling, one emerald for you. Is that all I needed? Yes, oak and seeds. So I need an oak sapling as well as some seeds. We could toss that back in there, get ourselves some bone meal and make sure we don't lose these seeds at all. Okay, good. I was going to say, if I accidentally, like if I didn't get any um, saplings back, that'd be very unfortunate. There we go. Oh, we only got one sapling. That's funny. We should use a crook. Nevertheless, got those there and we can go ahead and grab everything else. So we need a source gem and a diamond and then we need a mage bloom and a mage bloom seed. And we should also grab a another mage bloom seed as well as any other seeds we might see that we should be planting so pumpkins are good melon 
Do we have a melon block? No, we don't. So pumpkins, pumpkins are fine. Then we'll grab all of this, all the wood types. We'll grab eight of each. We'll grab some netherrack, some soul sand, nether warts. What else can we grab to put in the farm? There might be some other few things, but for now, I think that's fine. And then what we need is a barrel. Are barrel upgrades in this? Oh, I don't want to search in there. Do we have sophisticated storage? No, I don't think we have upgraded barrels. So what we're going to do is do a chest. Yes, we can make a uh, trapped. We can make here. What kind of what's the highest chest we have at the moment? All right, so we're just going to go ahead and make a diamond chest. Is that possible? Yeah, it is. Perfect. So we can make ourselves a copper chest. Use that. Get an iron chest. Use that. Get a gold chest. Oh, we don't have enough gold plates. Okay, we're going to go get some gold plates real quick, and then we can make ourselves a diamond chest. Awesome. Cool. We have our obsidian chest. Now this is where all of the items will go. Okay, we have everything we need, and we can go ahead and make our wordless break charm. So we come over here to our enchanting apparatus. We need... That's not right. You get off of there. So it's one diamond, source gem, sapling, sapling, mage bloom, seed, sapling this and then we put our charm in the middle that we forgot so like i said you put your wordless break shard in the middle it doesn't require any source nearby which is great see the sources and go down and you get yourself a wordless break charm and these things are great now obviously like i said the more the merrier so when you have plenty of them it works great and they will farm hundreds and hundreds of resources however we only have the one at the moment which we can't complain about it's better than nothing so we're just going to find the center of our room here is this center this should be center it feels like center all right so this is our center block here we're going to go ahead and place a dandelion down actually what we're going to do is we're going to place yeah we're going to place the dandelion down right click our wordless break on it so now we have a wordless break wordless break blossom you can break the block underneath it it's not a problem and we're going to place our obsidian chest below it and we get it down yep there we go so now that is a connected inventory and we'll go ahead and place our source jar right beside it and look at this little guy so if you hover over him it says mood content so he's happy he's happy with the current amount of stuff he has in his general vicinity however we want to make it better so we grabbed a few things here that will help improve his mood and these guys check in a 10 block radius from the center so 10 blocks across both ways this is only seven so we're fine we can actually go ahead and use the wall for some stuff so yeah as you see this guy is taking resources and they'll go into this chest right down here eventually <laughs> go into the chest unless it doesn't recognize this chest as an inventory because i see the items coming back interesting give me a second interesting i'm just going to give it some time i'm going to let it use some source see if it'll populate this chest eventually we're just going to leave it like that and we'll come back to it in like 10 15 20 minutes and see if it's actually worked if not we gotta figure that out so i was wondering why all of my Ars Nouveau quests weren't counting because I was like okay I've done a lot in Ars I know it's not too much but like there should be some quests involved in Ars so I went down I'm like okay I wonder why I'm like oh I've got Archwood Zapplings no you actually have to make a Soul Steel Axe it's a crafting oh it's a submit a request I think I have one in here that's not the one in my inventory what's the worst one we have why do I even use this one it's not even that good okay we're gonna keep the efficiency for one what's the worst one we have auto smelt everlasting Ross aspect. I'm never going to use this. I should be able to submit this, right? Yeah, okay. Look how many quests we just finished instantly. <laughs> so, yeah, we can actually go ahead and claim all of that, which is pretty useful. And that's all of the essences. Where did we get the essences from? Oh, from the ritual brazier. Cool. And that means we've technically finished this quest as well. However, we need to remember how to make these. Okay, it's just the earth shards. Okay, that's not that big of a deal for them giving to us at the time. Oh, that's interesting. Place a raw fish inside of the dispenser and dispense it. it will summon a live fish for you to refill and farm water shards. I never knew that. Also, I want to mute. Anyways, oh, we got a crystal chest as well. Glyph of fall. Oh wait, I want a glyph. Glyph, glyph, glyph. Glyph of exchange, glyph of fell. Submit. Exchange already done. Fell I've already done. Okay, just checking. It gave us another bookworm charm. Not very useful. We don't need another one, but we if we would have known that, we would not have made so many ourselves. However, the next thing in the docket is to make white rock, which we technically already got from a quest previously. Or sorry, not from a quest, but from the villages. However, we actually should know how to make it. It is earth essence, soul powder, enriched peat, and coal coke. Or 
block of gold. Thank goodness I do not have to make this. That is an annoying recipe. Eventually with the pure daisy you can just use blackstone and skip that whole process or you can skip both processes like I did and use the village as your source of whitestone. I've been AFK for just a little while. I wanted to see how the world spring would actually perform if I left it for a while. I gave it a bit more source after I farmed a bit more mobs from our farm and surprisingly it does work. It just took some time. I wasn't sure what was going on so I just sat around AFK for a bit and it does end up producing resources. However, this is nowhere near enough. Like the speed is, isn't worth it. Like you can probably get a lot faster with pedestals or other farming mods. However, I want to go ahead and add a lot more world sprees over here. I'd say at least 10, maybe 20 if I'm ambitious. I do only have like 30 diamonds left so it'll probably be like 10 realistically. However, the only way to go about getting more world spree charms as I don't, like I didn't see any naturally spawning at villages or on my islands or anything. So the only way to actually get them is by trading with a shady villager. Now the way you get a shady villager is by providing it with an arcane core similar to any other villager trading block and you have to get to level 4 and it costs 20 emeralds which is insane by the way. 20 emeralds! It's crazy. I don't have the villager hat which you get from killing a wandering trader. Oh a loot bee. Wait a minute. Perfect timing. Uh, Do I have a lead? Yes I do. I have five leads. Perfect. Loot bee. Where'd you go? Hello? Oh he's up there. Come down. I know you want to. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna bring him over to where items can't fly away. <laughs> Alright come in here buddy. There we go. So we're gonna wait. How did Starbuckle get up there? But yeah see Starbuckles will spawn right? But I haven't seen Drigmies spawn which makes sense i guess dreamings are obviously a lot more coveted star bunkles kind of just move items which are really useful don't get me wrong but for like ars magica or ars nouveau mobs we don't have any naturally spawning ones outside of the uh star bunkles up there right where are these items going man oh we got a hardened circuit hardened integral components nice also i do want to place some vanilla chests down because i will not get I don't, that's not how you search it up. I do want to get some mimics as there are some artifacts from Reliquary. Is it Reliquary? Artifacts from the Artifacts mod that I actually want. So I'm going to place some vanilla chests down and they might have a chance of spawning based off of the event listed up here in the Getting Started tab. There are, where are them? Here we go. There's the mimic event somewhere in here. Not, oh yeah, here, chest. So toggles mimic event. They'll drop from chests, right? And there is, if you remember last episode, we had to kill a scorpion that spawned in our mob farm. Down here in Monster Hunter, as soon as you observe a centipede, whether it be the head, the tail, whatever, you can actually disable the centip centipede spawns. So I went ahead and disabled the centipede spawns. I don't like them. They're, they take up the entirety of the mob farm and they're just kind of in the way. So getting back to the arcane core, I went ahead and picked up all the villagers from the villages we went and explored. So as you saw, we explored, if this once this loads, we went in and explored two other village villages up here, and then as well as the cataclysm under sunken city over there. So I went back to both villages, I flew back with my broom, and I collected all the villagers. And this is really easy to collect a villager, by the way. So this is the villager, right? You shift, right click, and... Due to the fact that having easy villagers in the pack, they just get picked up right away, which is a great mod. And later on, we can actually set up auto traders and trading like facilities for the villagers. However, that is locked behind magically inclined steel, which will be drenched steel ingots, which is steel ingots elementally fused. That is ahead here in tier one. Like that is this progression right here. We have the steel ingots, the element infuser, spring line shard. We have all that. That is just or the step right ahead of us where we are right now. However, I, I don't really want to worry about that. I'm going to focus on purely magic stuff for this episode and then we'll see where we get to afterwards. We might do some pedestals. I'm not entirely sure. Anyways, I want to grab my arcane core. I do want to make a small little box for this guy. I'll probably use that and see if I have any stairs. What kind of stairs do I have? White rock stairs? You know what? That works. And I'll go over to my magic area just because he's a little bit of a magic villager and I will grab some emeralds with me because I will need them to actually start trading. All right, something like this works. I really don't care actually what it looks like. So we can go ahead and stick our villager in there and he should recognize the arcane core. Eventually, he'll recognize the arcane core. Maybe if I replace it. No, good sir. Get back in there. No, good sir. Stay. No, 
sir. Where did that go? There we go. One, two. Got to be fast with it. Okay. Oh, you know what I can do? I can just actually block him in there like that. And then we can go ahead and place the arcane core down. And he should recognize it eventually. Yeah, this guy does not want to use my trading block. <laughs> like at all. I wonder if I put like any other villager down. Because this one's unemployed, right? So it should in like reality work. I'll grab a farmer. I'll grab my librarian. Sir, I don't want the escape artist in you to get too ahead of yourself. Get back here. Thank you. Why don't you want to convert? We're going to take you and try another one. Maybe he'll perform better. Oh, there we go. One of them performed. <laughs> there we go. We have our shady villager. Now that took way longer than it should have. However, we can trade until we see something we can trade for him. And you know what? Source gems and amethyst shards, not too bad. I can actually go ahead and do that. I don't think we have any invar coins, so that's why I wasn't going to do those trades. Let's see if we have... Oh, we have 16. You know what? We'll take those with us, and we'll also grab source gems and some amethyst. And we got a bunch of amethyst from the villages. You can get a lot of amethyst on the library sections of the villagers, like the villages actually. So that's very useful. And I think echo shards will be useful they're down the line and that gives us quite a bit of xp actually Ooh, we have wilden horns now i don't think we have any but we'll grab some bump granites we'll use eight coins we'll grab as many echo shards as we can and let him upgrade Ooh, he's giving us tablets but those are for signalum coin uh signalum coins and that we do not have at all uh tablet of ritual for challenge and then tablet of bur burrowing yeah we can't get those and i don't have any more amethysts unlucky okay if we plan to actually continue trading with our shady villager here we're going to definitely need more amethysts because we have an infinite amount of source gems but we don't have the infinite amount of amethyst just quite yet so what we're going to do is we're going to use another tablet of awakening which we used previously to get the Warless Briggs, and we will use our budding Amethyst that we got from the loot table, and we're going to set up an Amethyst Golem, which will also give us access to Creative Flight up here. It will give us a Tablet of Flight, so as long as we have this source, we will have Creative Flight at our base permanently. So that's going to be really cool to get. So for now, I've just gone ahead and built a small little enclosure right next to our villager, well, in our magic area here. I'm going to place down the budding Amethyst. I will keep that block there just because we're going to replace it with a crystal growth accelerator eventually, uh, this guy right here. And if they're attached to budding blocks, which will we'll use the budding Certus and the budding Amethyst eventually, it will just speed up the growth and that means our Amethyst Golem will be able to harvest them faster. Nevertheless, the way the Ritual Brazier works is as long as you perform the Ritual of Awakening near a budding Amethyst, it will provide a Golem, so we'll just right click that. It's near the block, and this should eventually spawn us a little fella. There we go. So now we have our little amethyst golem. And this guy will turn amethyst blocks into budding amethysts. So what we're going to do is we're going to place a few amethyst blocks down like this, just on top of these fences for now. We'll get some amethyst blocks, and then as they grow, actually they need to be further apart. This might be too small of an area. We'll just do the one for now because we don't have much amethyst on us, and then we'll expand it later on. Anyways, this guy eventually, over time, will turn this block of amethyst into a budding amethyst block, and he will put all of the goodies in that chest as they as he collects them. So it's really cool. You can also put a crystal growth accelerator underneath this from Applied Energistics, and once well, we're not even close to this yet, However, it will grow the budding blocks faster. Also, technically, since they just harvest them, you can put like an item collector on top of the chest. And as soon as they pop off, they'll go into it. So we'll see how fast this gets and we'll see how much we expand this before we get into bees because bees will take over our production. However, now that we've gone ahead and made ourselves an amethyst golem, we can grab ourselves the tablet of flight. Now, all you have to do with the tablet of flight is provide it with some source. Oh, there we go. That did it right before our eyes. So yeah, now there's a budding amethyst block. And and he will grow crystals out of this and harvest them over time. But now, like I was saying, we have ourselves a tablet of flight. And as long as we provide this with source, we will have creative flight on our island. So I'm going to put this in a central location. I'll probably put it directly underneath our ritual 
like our sword selecting here. Yeah, I should be able to just go and drink this block. I'll take the rain shield out, do something like that. That's fine. And I'm going to put a jar of source. We'll probably, we'll probably do four sorcerers around it just so this thing constantly has source. However, for manually right now, we'll have to do it this way. And if we right click the catalyst light and right click it, we now have creative light all around our island. We have creative light. So yeah, that is very, very strong. And it also, it's actually a light source down there, so it looks a little nicer. But yeah, now we have creative light and we never have to worry about using our broom to get around and building will be so much easier considering now we have an infinity wand from the storage of the loot in the nether i believe this was and the fact that we also have well creative light so i'm gonna be able to build this entire island up next episode we're going to work on our mob farm and pedestals and hopefully get ourselves a concrete factory setup so i can actually build this entire base out because we have the cobblestone that's not a problem we have sixty-six thousand. by the way i upgraded this to tier 4 i could upgrade it to tier 5 i just don't want to waste the diamonds as we're going to want them for the warless frigs however we have 66k cobblestone so that's never going to be a worry our lava tanks are doing pretty good i added two more and our warless frig over here is still farming away i added a few more logs around here and yeah he's just farming away so yeah we want to go ahead and use the amethyst we get from the golem and hopefully get ourselves more world breaks so i do hope you guys enjoyed this episode nevertheless we got ourselves a storage system we got creative flight and we do have the beginnings of magical farming set up so that's really cool like i said if you did enjoy this episode leave a like down below comment something if you learned something today or if you want to give me a tip for next episode and if you don't want to miss any episodes or any future videos make sure to hit that subscribe button i'll see you guys next time Bye-bye.